Oprah Winfrey is one of the most legendary talk show hosts ever, given the name of the queen of all media. Her talk show started all the way back in the 80s, and by the 90s, Oprah was one of the most watched people on TV. Her show lasted 25 years and led the way for her to become a billionaire through her multimedia ventures that included books, magazines, movies, and even an entire network. During the peak of her talk show in the 90s, Oprah would routinely draw in 13 to 14 million viewers on any given weekday. She had what seemed to be the entire world listening to her advice on anything from relationships to spiritual advice. This made Oprah one of the most influential people in the world. But the question is, what was she doing with that massive influence? What message was Oprah putting out through her hit show? What was she actually teaching her audience who watched her religiously? While many listened to Oprah for guidance, they failed to realize that she was guiding them away from the most important thing of all, God. Hey guys, I hope all is well. Welcome to the Truth Fist channel where I drop new videos every other day exposing the truth. In today's episode, I'm joined by my wife Dee. Hi everybody, I hope you guys are having a great day. We're going to be talking about Oprah Winfrey and how she was used to push the new age agenda. But before we begin, I just wanted to remind you guys to subscribe to my second channel, Truth Network, as the Truth team is working hard on new content that would only be available on the second channel. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any new content. You can find the channel linked in the description of this video or in the comments section. Thank you all, now let's get right into it. While Oprah today is one of the richest women in the world, her early upbringing was quite the opposite. Oprah was born in 1954 in Mississippi to a single teenage mother who was flat broke. She would end up being raised by her grandmother for the first six years of her life. She would eventually move back to her unstable mother, who was working as a maid trying to make ends meet. Later in Oprah's life, things got worse before they got better. She claims that she was SA'd by many of her own family members, starting when she was only nine years old until her teenage years. Eventually, Oprah would overcome her struggles and rise way beyond anyone would have expected. While she was still a teenager attending high school, she managed to land a job at a radio station. By the age of 19, Oprah had her first break as she was hired to be the co-anchor of a local Nashville news station. This wouldn't last long as she knew her calling was on TV. Shortly after her radio gig, she was cast for a talk show, AM Chicago, that was hosted by Dennis Swanson. In a few short months, the show's ratings went through the roof, proving Oprah was a possible star. This is when everything changed for Oprah, as a man by the name of Roger Elbert convinced her to sign a syndication deal for her own talk show called At The Movies. Roger told Oprah that she would make 40 times the amount of money she was making on the AM show. So Oprah signed the deal and a talk show star was born. The show's name would end up being changed from At The Movies to The Oprah Winfrey Show and not long after it was a massive hit. Oprah went from a mistreated, improvised child to the world's most influential media personality in the world. It is no doubt that Oprah is the biggest name in talk show media ever. Her show changed the perspective of millions and was one of the most impactful talk shows yet to date. The only problem is Oprah used all that influence for all the wrong reasons. Her massive platform was being used to push the New Age religion agenda that has led so many away from God into the corruption of self-worship. While Oprah claims to be a Christian, she has on many occasions shown that she is not. She has used her massive show to push this New Age religion or the religion of the Age of Horus. The New Age movement or the New Age religion started to rise up in the 1970s. The religion saw rejection of the authority of religious sects and the idea that spiritual awakening could be achieved through the exploration of an individual self, essentially implying that Jesus is not needed for a person's salvation. It teaches that each person is the source of their own salvation. In 2024, so many people identify as New Agers, people who follow this New Age movement. They buy books that teach them mostly occult beliefs and try to achieve what Oprah called herself as Christ consciousness, when a human becomes enlightened and ascends to a level of a god. While so many people are attracted to this New Age movement because of what it offers, very little of its followers know its true origin. Even though the modern New Age movement started seeing its rise in the 70s and then reached its peak in the 2010s, its actual start goes back to a woman from the 1800s called Helena Blavatsky. Helena was a mystic occultist and the founder of the Theosophical Society. The Theosophical Society is known to have laid down the foundation of the New Age movement, with much of his beliefs coming directly from Madame Blavatsky. What many people don't know is that Blavatsky was the occultist who actually inspired Aleister Crowley to become the monster he became. So just imagine that. In 1877, Blavatsky published Isis Unveiled, and this book will go on to shape the beliefs of the modern New Age movement. She proclaimed in her book that enlightenment was a synthesis of science, religion, and philosophy, proclaiming that it was reviving an ancient wisdom which underlay all the world's religions. 
Helena believed God was the forces of nature. Now, if you've seen my last few videos, you would have heard me talking about the Age of Horus. The Age of Horus and the New Age movement are the exact same thing. The New Age movement is the rebranding of the Age of Horus. They tried to remove the occult aspect of it and present it to the world as a spiritual key to enlightenment. The goddess Isis is the mother of Horus, and she is connected to the Age of Horus. Now you can see why Helena called the book Isis Unveiled. The goddess Isis plays an important role in the Age of Horus, and Blavowski's book was used to establish the Age of Horus beliefs. Helena was a straight-up Satanist, and these are some of the things she was quoted saying about Lucifer. She stated, It is Satan who is the god of our planet, and the only god. And in another quote she is quoted saying, And now it stands proven that Satan, or the red fiery dragon, the lord of phosphorus, and Lucifer or lightbearer, is in us, it is our mind. The new age movement she created saw Lucifer as its god, and now we have millions claiming to be new agers. What Blavatsky taught was the same thing that Lucifer taught, self-worship. She claims that we decide our own fate, not God, we decide our own salvation. So many lost souls are following this not knowing they are truly following Lucifer's beliefs, who first said the same to Adam and Eve all those years ago. Blavatsky plays an important role in the occult. Crowley was a massive fan of Blavatsky. He admired her work and she inspired him. The same year Helena created the Theosophical Society was the same year Crowley was born and he loved that. Crowley thought Helena was a genuine messenger of the fallen gods he himself worshipped. Crowley would end up meeting Helena's successor Annie Besant. As the New Age movement started to grow in the 90s and the early 2000s, one massive talk show host pushing it was Oprah. A little known fact about Oprah is that her real name is not Oprah, but Orpah, a name that comes directly from the Bible in the Book of Ruth. In the Book of Ruth, Oprah is presented in the story of Naomi, and she represents a path that's chosen that led to eternal consequences. In this article, it states this about Orpah. At times we choose the familiar, more comfortable route, and other times we embrace the unexplored way and trust God to lead. We follow the familiar or follow God. One path can lead away from God, and the other takes us towards God into His loving, caring, and protection. In the Book of Ruth, we meet two sisters-in-law, Orpah and Ruth, who choose different paths. One towards God, the other return to familiar people and gods. Orpah chose the familiar path while Ruth chose the faithful way. This is exactly what Oprah is doing, leading souls away from God. Oprah presented herself as a New Age Christian. She claims to be Christian but preach confusion. According to Oprah, you don't need Jesus to go to heaven. Just like the New Age movement, she claims the path is within us. In this video, Oprah can be seen claiming that even though she is a Christian, she doesn't believe Jesus is the only way to salvation. She then goes on to claim that Jesus didn't come down to die on the cross for our sins, but instead to teach us how to achieve Christ consciousness. I'm a Christian who believes that there are there are certainly many more paths to God other than Christianity. I'm a free-thinking Christian who believes in my way, but I don't believe that it's the only way. What I believe is that Jesus came to show us Christ consciousness. My question is to you, Oprah, how have you reconciled these spiritual teachings with your Christian beliefs? I've reconciled it because I was able to open my mind about the, um, the absolute indescribable hugeness of that which we call God. Um, I took God out of the box because I grew up in the Baptist church and there were, you know, rules and, you know, belief systems and doctrine. And I love this quote that uh, Eckhart has. Um, this is one of my favorite quotes in uh, chapter one, where he says, man made God in his own image. The eternal, the infinite, and unnameable was reduced to a mental idol that you had to believe in and worship as my God or our God. Now, I think that's very eloquently put uh, by Eckhart Tolle in chapter one. And, you know, it's, it's been a journey to get to the place where I understand, as I said on the pre-show here, that what I believe is that Jesus came to show us Christ consciousness, that Jesus came us to show us the way of the heart and that what Jesus was saying that to show us the higher consciousness that we're all talking about here. Jesus came to say, look, I'm going to live in the body, in the human body, and I'm going to show you how it's done. In my belief, even as a Christian, I don't believe that Jesus came to start Christianity. The new spirituality is that you are your own best authority. As you work to know and love yourself, you discover how to live a more spiritual life. The old is God and the path to worship him have already been defined. All you need to do is follow the directions. The new is being able to listen within your own definition of spirituality, your deeper longing or your compass on the search. And the old says exactly what Eckhart was saying, that there is only one path. It's the right way and all other ways are wrong. And the new spirituality says that many paths lead to spiritual freedom and peace. You have a rich array of gems from which to uh, draw illumination. The world's religious tradition, mythology, 
psychology, healing methods, scientific wisdom, your own exper experience, and that you can begin to string a necklace all your own. Then she lists, you know, other old and new. As you heard for yourself, Oprah talks about reaching God on many different paths and how she achieved Christ consciousness. Well, let's see what Oprah means by Christ Consciousness. If we Google Christ Consciousness, we get this Wikipedia article that states, Higher Consciousness, also called Expanded Consciousness, is a term that has been used in various ways to label a particular state of consciousness or personal development. It may be used to describe a state of liberation from the limitations of self-concept or ego, as well as a state of mystical experience in which the perceived separation between the isolated self and the world or God is transcended. It may also refer to the state of increased alertness or awakening to a new perspective. While the concept has ancient roots, practices, and techniques, it has been significantly developed as a central notion in contemporary popular spirituality, including the New Age movement. As we can see, Christ consciousness or higher consciousness is reaching enlightenment, a godlike state. We also see that it's directly tied to the New Age movement. Oprah, who claims to be a Christian, is promoting New Age propaganda that was created by Blavowski, who was a straight up Satanist. It's not hard to see what Oprah was preaching was the same message as Blavowski. In another video, we can see Oprah arguing with someone on our talk show about Jesus not being the only way to salvation. A panel has been discussing the spirituality and the forces of God, but I also believe that there are two forces that are here with us. That we do have our, our, our God that we can depend on, but there's also a power of darkness that we do need to be aware of. And that's do where the choice is. Do you begin. believe that, that you can choose between one or the other? Most, most absolute definitely. Yes. Now, Marianne uh, Williams says in her book, Return to Love, that we're always walking in the direction of one or the other. That all of your actions in life, either you're moving toward the darkness or you're moving toward the light. Right. She calls it fear and love. There's a wonderful book called Ishmael by Daniel Quinn, which talks it, which, which is. Anyway, it's a gorilla talking. Anyway, uh, it talks about one of the points it brings out is one of the mistakes that human beings make is believing that there is only one way to live That's and right. that we don't accept that there are diverse ways of being in the world, that there are millions of ways to be a then human how do you being. And, and many ways, no, but many paths to what you call God. That and her path crazy. might be something else, and when she gets there, she might call it the light. But her loving and her kindness and her generosity brings her, if it brings her to the same point that it brings you, it doesn't matter whether she called it God along the way or not. And I guess the danger that could be on that, I mean, it's. It sounds great on the onset, but if you really look at both sides, I there could possibly be just one way. What, what about Jesus? What about Jesus? There is one way and only one way, and that is through Jesus. There couldn't possibly be with because you say there isn't. Possibly be because you say you intellectualize it and say there isn't. If you don't believe that, you're all buying into the lie. Do you think? Do you think that if you if you are somewhere on the planet? If you're somewhere on the planet and you never hear the name of Jesus, you never hear the name of Jesus, but yet you live with a loving heart, you lived as Jesus would have had you to live, you lived for the same purpose that Jesus came to the planet to teach us all, but you are in some remote part of the earth and you never heard the name of Jesus, you cannot get to heaven, you think? And that's covered in the scriptures, too. The People are talked about it. God knows the heart. Does God care about your heart or does God care about you call his son Jesus? Well, you know... Oprah, God, Jesus can come back until that gospel is preached in the four corners of this earth. So, you know, figure it out. Okay, okay, I can't get into a religious argument with you. It's not as you heard for yourself, Oprah again claims that Jesus isn't the only way to salvation, that there's multiple ways, even appearing upset when Jesus was mentioned. In another video, she even states something again that I found interesting. I, I think that it's great that, you know, someone like Oprah, who's successful, has to pave the way for acceptance in the community. I mean, if this is what we have to do to break down barriers, then let's do it. That's what you think. What do you think? I, I've seen it in the Bible. It clearly states that homosexuality is wrong. And I thought you are a powerful woman and you mm -hmm. have done so much. And if you are going to represent, represent yourself as a Christian and then you're going to go on the show and say that you also support that, it's, it's double standarding. Well, I have a different view of Christian than you do. Okay? And... The God I serve, the God I serve, the God I serve doesn't care whether you're tall or short or whether you were born um, uh, black or Asian or gay. And so that's just a difference of belief. And I don't expect to change your belief today because I have, just before I came down here, I'm late today because I was in the, the makeup room arguing with somebody who was telling me how all gay people are, now I'm going to, with all the other gay people for doing, for doing the show. I take full responsibility for my going to hell or heaven. I take full responsibility and I feel that everybody who's concerned about me now going to hell because I'm doing the Ellen DeGeneres show, I think that you all should take that energy and try to create a little heaven here on earth for everybody. And I take full responsibility for it. Right. And if gay, Ellen says yeah. she's gay, I believe God created her gay. I believe God did that. You can't. As you heard for yourself, 
Oprah claims that the God she serves doesn't judge those that are gay, while I myself do not judge those that are gay, as I believe if a person is gay or not doesn't affect me. It is a personal choice and it's between themselves and God, but we all know that in the Bible it does state that it's not accepted in the eyes of God. According to Oprah, the God she serves doesn't consider it a sin. I wonder what God she is referring to. This clearly lets you know Oprah isn't worshipping the same God as the Christians. She is serving the God of the New Age movement that Blavowski, the mother of the New Age movement, stated was Lucifer. In another video, we can see Oprah mocking God while she was attending the late show of Colbert. During her appearance, at a certain point, we can see them show a video of God talking to Oprah. Oprah, Stephen, what's up? Hey! Oh, hey, it is Scott, everybody. Give it up for the Lord. Get out my I'm gun. sorry about this, Oprah. I apologize. I apologize. God stops by every while. He's a fan. Can I, can I, Lord, I'm kind of in the middle of talking to somebody important. As you saw for yourself again, we saw the same energy coming from Oprah, who we know sees herself as a god. Oprah got this big because she was being used to push this new age religion needed for the age of Horus. Her show was created to guide the world to the age of Horus beliefs, and it worked. You know what's interesting is that what Oprah did in the 90s and in the 2000s, Joe Rogan is doing today. I noticed that Rogan also pushes that new age propaganda on his massive platform. He literally denounced Jesus and pushed this new age idea that, like you said, came from Blavatsky. There's actually a clip from the Joe Rogan podcast in which Joe questions the existence of Jesus and mocks those who believe in him. At the end of the day, with no proof, everything is mythology. Everything. With no proof. With proof, and you examine the proof. It's super simple. And anybody that argues against that is just, you're just biased. You, you have your own ideas. Some proof that there was a God, that this God had one son, made the son come down and get beat out of him and nailed to a board so that we could all have no sin. Do you have, can you show me some studies? Do you have a box of evidence that you can pull out and we can examine all the different pieces that points to the undeniable conclusion that that's true? Because if you don't, then it's a myth. Then you're believing mythology. Doesn't mean it's not real. If you put all your eggs in that basket and you don't have any proof at all, well, you're entering into this weird world where you don't pay attention to shit. You're entering into this weird world where you ignore certain aspects of things because you've decided what is and what isn't. That's not thinking. That's like it's convenient cookie holder placement of ideas. It's not thinking. Because if you're thinking, you can't accept it. If you're thinking, you go, wait, what? He came back from the dead? Has anybody ever done that? Three days? Came back from the dead. I don't think you can do that. I mean, that's what people would do uh, normally. <laughs> you know, like I went to my kid had a function today and I went to uh, this function and they're all, we're singing God bless America and there's like something about heaven in there and their school prayer. I'm like, well, okay, are, you are we teaching pe people? We're teaching kids things, right? What's heaven? Where, where is this? Is this a real thing? Or are we just pretending? heaven's real so the kids feel good and they can get 12th grade what are we doing here what are we doing you know we have to make up about stuff that we don't know in, instead of just accepting what we do know instead of just celebrating and accepting what we know about life we have to pretend that there's a heaven and you're gonna go to heaven when you die what the f are you talking about you're teaching my kid nonsense why don't you teach him some rumpus still skin why don't you make some it up about leprechauns you're making it up about heaven i'm not saying heaven doesn't exist but you're just making it up you're teaching a school in a class you're making them and then in heaven god in heaven god in heaven where's heaven who's god what are you talking about what are you talking about you're making up some you're making up some in a school like and you don't okay like if the kid comes to you like um where is heaven on a map can you take me to have is do we have a google earth can we check out heaven can i see the harp oh well this right here is exactly what the New Age religion is pushing. They're telling you to question Christ and follow your will. All of the teachings that come from Blavatsky and Crawley. It's obvious what Oprah is doing. And it's sad that so many women got misguided by her. I remember how popular Oprah was when I was growing up. And just about half of the women I knew look up to her. And little did they know that she was guiding them away from God pushing this new age nonsense that went on to confuse many of the millions that followed her. You know, that's a great point when it comes to Joe Rogan. I would definitely agree with you there. Joe Rogan is one of the biggest podcasters in the world, if not the biggest. And like with Oprah, he was seen as this giant in the space and received the most money out of the podcast industry. And you're right. I made a video on Rogan months back and it was exactly what he was pushing, this new age movement, this new age agenda. He was mocking Christ, making fun of Jesus, making fun of those who follow Jesus, and pushing this idea, just like Oprah, about this enlightenment, about worshiping self and reaching higher consciousness, because this is the religion of the new age. This is the religion of the age of Horus. They have to bring it in. And how do they have people follow this? By having the biggest, most influential people make it look appealing and pushing it onto the masses. So many people became new agers because of watching Joe Rogan's podcast. They follow them now like many followed Oprah back then. And it's sad because they do not know what they're truly following. These people are puppets. They're being made to push this agenda. This is their job. They're put in positions to brainwash the masses. And it's sadly what's going on as so many people proclaim this new age movement as what they believe in. You know, Oprah was one of the Masonic puppets that benefited from the Maui situation that happened last year. 
It was reported last year that Oprah was one of the celebrities taking advantage of the Maui fires and buying up land that she couldn't previously get. We know that Maui situation was a way for these elites to get the land that they wanted. This isn't something I think. This is something those in Maui that dealt with the situation felt. We know a person doesn't make it to that level that she made it to without selling out and becoming a puppet. And that's exactly what she is. A puppet that guided millions to a false religion. Yeah, she is definitely a Masonic puppet. And we saw that with the Dave Chappelle appearance on her show, you know? When Dave Chappelle was rebelling against the industry years back, Oprah invited him on her show and tried to shut him up and make him look crazy. When Dave was explaining to Oprah what the industry really was, she seemed to act in denial and dismissive towards him. It's obvious that she's a puppet like all the rest. She pushes the false religion to the masses. And as we can see, the only reason they made Oprah what she is, is to push this new age agenda using a relatable face. Sadly, so many people were misguided by Oprah to follow this false religion. But for those that were misguided, there's still time while you're walking this earth to turn back to God and find salvation. Well, that's it for this video. But before you guys go, I just wanted to ask you to like, comment, and share this video so that it would be recommended to others. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye, everybody. I hope you guys have a great day.